Hello and welcome to this Royal Society video podcast. Since 1955, scientists at the CERN Laboratory have been asking some of those fundamental questions about our universe, culminating in one of the most ambitious scientific experiments, the Large Hadron Collider. Joining us today are just some of the scientists working on this particle accelerator, explaining what they do and why the Large Hadron Collider is so important. Well, I'm actually a theoretical physicist. Uh, so to describe what I do, uh, I'll tell you a little story. Back in 1982, Mrs Thatcher, while well, she was Prime Minister at the time, she came to visit CERN. What do you do, young man? So I said, well, I'm a theoretical physicist. My job is to think of things for the experiments to look for and uh, then hope they find something different. So she said, wouldn't it be better, young man, if they found what you predicted? So I said, well, well actually, then we wouldn't feel that we were learning anything new. So that's somehow the same spirit that I have now for the LHC, that uh, you know, I and my other theoretical colleagues have made all sorts of predictions based on our ideas for what the LHC might find. Uh, but I hope that the LHC will become famous for discovering something that none of us had the imagination to think of. The Large Hadron Collider is uh, the, the, the latest manifestation of a, a journey that began about 75 years ago when Ernest Lawrence in Berkeley, California uh, uh, invented the cyclotron. And this was a device that uh, accelerated particles to allow us to get to quite high energies in the laboratory. Uh, the Large Hadron Collider is uh, about a million times higher energy than those early experiments, and this is uh, the development that we have achieved in, the, in these last 75 years. The importance of going to the high energy is that the higher the energy is, the, uh, the smaller, the, 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 we can see with more and more acuity uh, at the, 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 the fundamental building blo blocks of, uh, of, of, of the universe. The question we're trying to answer, which set the scale for the LHC, of course, although we wanted to build as big a machine as we could, but the taxpayer wanted to have a reason, and there was a reason, uh, is to answer the question, how do particles acquire mass? It seems a little bit esoteric, but we've developed in the past an extremely successful theory of particle physics, of how the elementary particles and forces work which is based on a mathematical idea which requires everything to be moving at the speed of light and have no mass. But in fact, we are not moving at the speed of light. So something must mean that this theory develops a lopsided solution. This is a so-called Higgs mechanism. Uh, we know that there has to be a lopsided solution because the underlying theory that forces things to be massless, the more we test it, the more accurate it looks but we don't know what causes it. So this Higgs question, is it one Higgs, is it two Higgs, is it elementary, is it composite, we really don't know. And there are very good reasons, though it's not actually a mathematical theorem, to think that the answer to that question lies in the regime that we will look at with the Large Hadron Collider. So we're going to find out why some things are heavy and some things are not. There are many other questions. We hope that we will find a number of uh, missing pieces uh, that will be critical to understand how the universe evolved from uh, after the Big Bang till now. Uh, it, it's uh, changed in character from a kind of a homogeneous hot material to now what we see galaxies and spread out in certain patterns. And the types of interactions that we study at the accelerator have explained, you know, why stars shine, why they explode, uh, lots, <laughs> lots of other things like that. And then there are missing elements. Uh, what's the dark matter? We may find the origin of the dark matter in the universe. When we look up in the sky, what we see is only a small percentage of what we know to be up there from watching how things move. Uh, as particle physicists, we have theories that provide candidate pieces of matter that could be the dark matter, but we haven't found them yet. Well, I'm particularly involved with the LHCb experiment, which is a specific purpose experiment to um, look at antimatter 
the antimatter matter asymmetries in the universe. My particular interest is actually looking for new physics, new phenomena in quantum loop processes, which also is related to the matter-antimatter asymmetry in the universe. And we could find complete surprises, of course. So there are a completely new domain is opening up, which will give us new understanding of how things work at a very small scale, but it also will cast light on how the universe evolved just after it was born. Uh, through Einstein's uh, special theory of relativity, which links energy to mass by the famous formula e equals mc squared, if you get to higher and higher energies, you're able to create uh, forms of matter that didn't exist since the, right the beginning of the universe, uh, microseconds after the Big Bang. So another thing that you're doing with the Large Hadron Collider is creating on a, in the laboratory and on a mini scale, uh, the conditions of the early universe. So the technological developments that have been required um, just to make the Large Hadron Collider possible have been huge. So just focusing on my own area in terms of um, computing, um, pushing distributed computing. Um, so taking the, the World Wide Web to its next step to be able to do um, computer-enabled resources accessible all over the world to support very large distributed communities. So the grid computing aspects, which have now sort of been commercialised as things like the cloud and what have you, I think started out with the LHC, with the, the focused effort that we need to bring the resources together. And on computer networking, um, th we were some of the earliest groups to try and move huge amounts of data around in what's now called Lambda networking in the internet. The next generation of the internet is moving massive amounts of data around. So just in the computing area, we already, already see those things. So what the LHC will enable us to do is or well, sometimes I like to buy, compare it to, you know, if you buy a computer and it comes with a, with a manual for how to use it, and it's like opening a new chapter in this manual, and there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with your computer, or in this case, the universe, that previously you didn't know about. And uh, so I, I don't know what those discoveries are going to be useful for, uh, but I'm sure there will be you know, a wide range of fundamental discoveries. And... Uh, what I can tell you is that in the past, whenever fundamental physics has made advances, eventually those have turned out to be useful for people. It's not a surprise that we haven't made any big discoveries yet. It's only just beginning and we wouldn't have expected them really. We have run the machine enough though to show that it's working absolutely beautiful, the detectors are working very beautifully, so we're absolutely poised to make big discoveries, we hope. Somebody actually asked me this morning, well, what, what use is it going to be if we discover a Higgs boson at the LHC? And my answer to that is, I don't know. I don't even know that we're going to discover a Higgs boson because I don't know whether it exists. But I'm sure that something that we discover at the LHC, or at least the way in which we discover it, will be useful.